Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox news video. Today, we've released LaunchBox 11.3, and like with all new LaunchBox and Big Box releases, we have some new fixes, new improvements, and new features. In this video, I'm going to be going over all of the new features, some of the new improvements, and some of the new fixes. We have a lot of improvements and fixes, and I'm not going to be going over every single one in this video, but I will leave a link to the changelog in the description so you can check it out. We're going to start off from the back end here, from the fixes, and work our way up to the new features. So these first two fixes here both relate to GOG. Every once in a while, screenshots pull from GOG were sometimes getting cut off. Now, not everybody ran into this, but it should be fixed for everybody now. Next up, some games imported from GOG were not using DOSBox correctly. Some people were having issues with it starting up properly. But now the games you import from GOG that utilize DOSBox will start properly. Half stars from the add and edit screen were not being displayed correctly when you were using a high DPI display. This is now fixed. And finally, some users were having issues with Big Box not shutting down properly, and this was due to a bug with CEF Sharp and Chromium. This has now been ironed out, so Big Box should shut down properly from now on. Moving up to the improvements, VLC has been updated to 3.0.11, and CEF Sharp has also been updated. Remember, we were having some issues with Big Box not shutting down properly. This should take care of it. Added the following fields to the audit tool, date added, date modified, and last played. And finally, for improvements, ROM prioritization routine should now do a better job at avoiding prototype and beta ROMs. Basically, this is just going to do a much better job at choosing the best default ROM to use when you're doing your imports. So yeah, as you can see here, there's more fixes and more improvements to go over. If you're interested in checking out everything, I'll leave a link to the change log in the description. But now it's time to move on to the new features. First one we want to take a look at is alternate names are now being downloaded from the LaunchBox Games database. This is when you're importing your games, and I'm going to give you a quick demo here. As a lot of us know that some games have different names in different regions in the world, and I've noticed this a lot with PlayStation, so we'll head down to PlayStation. In Cold Blood, this is the US name. I'm going to right click, go to edit, and you can see we have a new section here called alternate names. In Germany, it was known as Cold Blood. It's also known by different names in Spain and France. We'll do another one here. Blood Omen Legacy of Kane, one of my favorite games. This was known by a different name in Japan, so we'll right click, go to edit, alternate names, and as you can see, it was known as Kane the Vampire in Japan. If we want to set this selected name as our title, all we need to do is choose it from here, set selected name as title, Kane the Vampire, choose OK, and now you can see it's just displaying Kane the Vampire. Now keep in mind with this new feature, it's automatically going to choose the correct alternate name on import based on the region and the ROM file name. But if you do want to go back and switch it out, you can always do it. And since I already have LaunchBox on screen, let's talk about the next new feature. New fields have been added, max players, release type, video URL, and Wikipedia URL. This is going to be downloaded from the LaunchBox Games database when available, so keep in mind some games may not have all of this information filled out. But we'll go with Legacy of Kane. This is going to be under Add and Edit, so we'll go to Edit. And as you can see, we now have some new fields. Video URL, Wikipedia URL, Max Players, we also have the Release Type. And for the video URL and the Wikipedia, we have a Visit section. It'll open up Chrome, take us right to that Wikipedia so you can learn more about the game. Really cool feature if you ask me. And now I want to move on to my new favorite feature for LaunchBox 11.3. LaunchBox and BigBox now have experimental support for Linux using Wine. It's actually really easy to install if you're running a version of Linux. Here I'm running Ubuntu 20.04, and as you can see, LaunchBox is now running in Linux pretty easily. Now this was possible before with a lot of tweaking with Wine and a few other applications. I've actually seen it done in the past, but now we have official experimental support for LaunchBox and BigBox in Linux. And both actually run really well in Linux, and we have an install.sh, we'll go over that in just a second, and I do plan on doing a full tutorial, but first up, let's take a look at BigBox running in Ubuntu 20.04. So 
So keep in mind, this is running in Wine on Linux, so performance will never be as good as it is on a real Windows PC. But overall, if you're just a Linux user and you'd like to test out or use LaunchBox and BigBox on your main Linux PC, it is possible now, and it's pretty easy to install. This is experimental. You're going to run into a few bugs here and there, but we do plan on getting some of this stuff ironed out. We've been testing it a lot, and it seems to be functioning really well, especially in Ubuntu 20.04. In order to install this on your Linux machine, you can always go through it manually if you want to, but luckily, over on the forum, I'll leave a link for this in the description, we do have an install.sh. Basically, what you're going to do is download the launchbox install.sh CD into the directory you have that sh file stored, and use super user privileges to run this sh file. It's then going to download launchbox, wine, and all of the dependencies you need to get this up and running on your Linux machine. It's actually pretty easy to do now that we have this install.sh ready to go, but I am going to do a full tutorial on this. I'll be using Ubuntu 20.04, so if you're interested in getting this up and running, keep an eye on the channel because a full tutorial will be coming very soon. There are a few things to note. Only the VLC video player is going to work. Obviously, we're not on Windows, so we can't use the Windows Media Player. And any features that use the Chromium Embedded Framework just aren't going to work, like web browsing or viewing, let's say, manuals through the Chrome browser. It's just not going to work right now with Linux. But keep in mind, this is very experimental, and we are working on bug fixes here and there, so you will run into some issues running LaunchBox and BigBox on Linux. But still, I think it's pretty awesome. But that's pretty much it for this one. We really appreciate you watching and hope you enjoyed LaunchBox 11.3. If you're interested in that Linux tutorial, definitely subscribe to the channel so you can get a notification as soon as it's uploaded. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.